Okay, one more chronograph session testing 9mm loads from a carbine versus from a pistol. This is actually the second time I've tried to do this particular batch of ammo. It's a Hornady and two Corbons. And the first time I ran it, the first round of the Hornady through the carbine, I got a complete case separation. That is what was lodged in the chamber of the carbine. I, I had both pieces, but in my scrounging around cleaning up the gun trying to get that out of the chamber, I lost the, the rim side of things. I've never had a 9mm do that before. Uh, never had any non full bore rifle caliber do that for me, and even that's been very rare. So we'll just see if it goes better this time. Hopefully, that was a fluke. This is Hornady's 135 grain critical duty plus P with their flex lock, which is just a insert. It doesn't stick out like some do to help with feeding. It just keeps it from clogging. 135 plus P. Next is Corbon 125 grain jacketed hollow point plus P. This is not the DPX. This is their old school 125. And that is a monster cavity on that hollow point right there. That is a large opening. They claim, what, I believe 1250? Yeah, 1250 feet per second. We'll see how it does. This other one, this other Corbon, of course, I couldn't find the box for it, so I just pulled the rounds out of my loaded magazines I had. This is their 100 grain plus P urban response. A little stubby 100 grainer, a little polymer ball in the end to help with feeding and also to prevent clogging. Uh, I'm curious if it'll be as fast as the 100 grain power ball from Corbon was. That that thing averaged over 1800 feet per second out of both the Camp 9 I had before and the current CMMG I have now. Um, don't know that this will be the same. It would seem reasonable to expect that. Same company, same bullet weight. Uh, there we go, that 1660 is up there from something earlier. In fact, I'm going to reset this. Start with fresh strings. I was very disillusioned with that Hornady. Again, that's hopefully a fluke. Okay. Okay, so first up, we have the Hornady 135 Plus P from the Glock 19. Eleven thirty-eight, ten ninety-one. Okay, from the carbine. Hopefully it won't rip itself apart again this time. The case separation. Hornady 135 plus P critical duty from the carbine. 1277. That's pretty slow for a 16 inch barrel. 1286. Yeah, 1277 and 1286. Granted, that's a fairly heavy ish bullet, but it is not particularly fast. Okay, next. The Corbon 125 jacket at hollow point from the Glock 19. 1246. And 
this or I better get up the numbers. Okay, now we're back on track. The Corbon 125 from the carbine. Hmm. Well, you're a feed on that. This is that load with that extremely wide hollow point on it. And twice in a row it's failed to get up the ramp of this carbine. Okay. Okay, Hornady 125 plus P from the carbine. Of course. Yeah, this gun just does not like this ammo. That's another failure to feed hung up on the ramp. We'll try it again here just to get the numbers, but $14.93. And of course, all that monkey business, I lost track of the first number. Fourteen sixty-eight. Last one up. Corbon Urban Response 100 grain plus P from the Glock 19. 1419 and 1455. That's pretty close to advertised velocity. They show 1475 on the box, so maybe out of a full size gun it would actually get that. I'm pretty interested to see what this will do out of the carbine. Again, out of the Camp 9 I had for years, and also from this same gun, the 100 grain Corbon Powerball averaged over 1,800 feet per second. <coughs> I'm curious to see if this does the same. There we go, the 100 grain Corbon Urban, Res Urban Response from the Carbine. 1683, quite a bit slower. 1683 and 1679. That is quite a bit slower. Okay. Get this here where you can see it where the sun's not killing the view. Okay, so there we have it. Well, now I can't see the screen. Okay, from the Glock 19, that Hornady was pretty milk toast. It's 373 foot pounds of energy, and from the carbine, it wasn't tons hotter. 481. Sorry, 461. Gotta take off the glasses.
a Corbon 125, it was hotter and it was pretty close to what their claims were. 1249 and a half and they claimed 1275, so that's fair out of a semi-compact gun like the Glock 19. Now out of the carbine, got almost averaging, what, 1480 feet per second, so. So almost 1500 feet per second, over 600 foot-pounds of energy. But obviously that gun doesn't like it. That thing jammed more often than not with that. So that obviously is not an option for that gun. And the last one, the Corbon Urban Response, I was a little surprised, disappointed in that. Out of the handgun, it did okay. 1437, they claim 1475. So pretty darn close to what they claim. Uh, good energy, 458. That's pretty good for a Glock 19 size gun, but out of the carbine, it still did good. I mean, it's still better than most plus P ammo, but it's not in the same neighborhood as the Powerball. The Powerball out of this gun and my Camp 9 both averaged over 1800 feet per second. So here it's 627. So both the carbons uh, broke 600 foot pounds of energy but they're not real barn burners. Uh, they're good. I guess maybe I'm just spoiled by the Powerball out of the carbine. Uh, for uses like we have out here in the country, we don't have thug problems, we have coyote problems. So for small things like the coyotes, the foxes coming after small animals, that's, that's a fine performer for something like that. I don't know that I would trust that light and fast a bullet in 35 caliber for personal defensive uses. I just don't know about the penetration there. That would take some gel testing. But anyway, that's what we got, and I will get a few more done as we go. Thanks.